Hey, welcome everyone to the Secrets of Coaching podcast, where we sit down and uncover the strategies, mindset, and awesome stories of the most influential online digital coaches. I'm your host, Dino Gomez. Today, we have my good buddy and uh, Kyle Brown on the show. Kyle is a wellness sage, a former ESPN radio, radio host, an author, a speaker, the creator of Fit365 Shakes. He does everything. Kyle for um, is a versatile entrepreneur. He's been a go-to resource for some of the world's leading Fortune 500 organizations, top C- CEOs, professional and Olympic athletes, and over 50 of the world's biggest celebrities. Kyle, thanks so much for joining me today, man, and welcome to the show. Well, I appreciate your having me and uh, excited that you're in momentum mode, rocking and rolling, letting the world keep turning. That's right. We definitely are. And in today's episode, uh, I'm so excited to speak with you. It's such an honor to speak with you today because the timing for this couldn't be more perfect with everything that's going on uh, right now. Um, To catch everybody up that's listening, we are in the middle of the coronavirus epidemic, if if, as some are referring uh, referring to it as. And there's so much chaos going around um, everywhere. Just people in general. You know, of course, schools are shut down and and. uh, People are quarantined and, and there's just, you know, travel has stopped. So much is happening right now. There's uh, a lot of people are concerned. Some others aren't as concerned, but I'm really excited to have you on the show today with your, your background and your knowledge and your expertise, because um, I think we can answer a lot of uh, burning questions that our audience has. And so um, let me start off by just asking you this, Kyle, what are your thoughts on this whole virus thing? And I mean, what, what is the number one thing that entrepreneurs and coaches should be doing at this point in time with, with so much going on? Uh, great question. Well, I'll start by saying I am not a medical professional. I have uh, quite a few of those in my family. Uh, and I would say the first thing that, uh, that is important is to remember your space of expertise. It's a huge problem I see in the digital marketing space is that We hire a coach in something, and because we know how to market well, all of a sudden we're an expert in every single category. So you have digital marketers giving medical advice and and, uh, epidemiology advice, and I've got somebody like my sister went to Johns Hopkins for public health and and worked CDC in the Department of Health and Human Services and and uh, and whatnot sitting going like what what is the digital marketer giving advice on this stuff so i would say as a coach as a marketer as a pro is stay in your lane the the beauty is i have a fairly diversified lane so i would tell you as a coach the most important thing you can understand is that there is nothing more powerful than your mind and learning how to feel emotions not deny emotions and not be uh the completely oblivious to anything going on individual, but feel emotions, let them go, and then come from a place of power, not fear in every one of your actions going forward. I love that. And that, and that's so big right there, especially, especially at this type of time where people are experiencing things they haven't experienced before. And there is a level of fear. There is a level of doubt and concern. Businesses are changing. Um, And so you know, when we talk about mindset here, let's, let's talk about that a little bit more. What types of, I'm really curious, like what types of practices and, and things should entrepreneurs and coaches be doing to protect their mindset or otherwise keep themselves um, in the right frame of mind so that they uh, can continue to press forward, grow their business and, and otherwise remain healthy? Right. Well, uh, there's, there's a great statement that says, if you can't change your circumstances, change your perspective. So, it is uh, the first thing I'll tell you what not to do. Um, Surfing social media, hitting like on a whole bunch of motivational uh, posts will not help you handle your anxiety, your fear, your panic, your worry, anything like that. It might give you a little serotonin boost for a second, but that's not going to address the deep underlining issues. The other thing I'll tell you not to do is don't say, well, I'm just going to put my head down and push through this and deal with the panic and the anxiety. Because the second you get out of that lane, all of a sudden panic attacks, anxiety attacks, tears, a total in control, lack of control is going to kick in. Because uh, anytime you eat something, it needs to be digested. <laughs> that goes for your food. 
but that also goes for your emotions, your fear, your worry, your overwhelm, your anxiety, your panic. Um, be okay with bringing those things to the table and then creating a good clean pan, uh, plan of action. So a few things that I think would work really well is one, make sure you have a few different techniques in play that can help you get out of that fight or flight state. What I do personally is uh, I've got a nice trifecta. One is I coach uh, emotional freedom techniques, tapping. I've been doing that stuff since 2006, so a very long time. Uh, but incorporating things like that that can get you out of fight or flight, move energy around, uh, any type of work that you can do in meditation space, yoga space, which is a form of meditation emotion, getting into and feeling your body and type of exercise is going to be fantastic. And then the uh, best medicine, in my opinion, on top of all of that is laughter. I am a huge believer in the ideology that the average child laughs 400 times a day and the average adult laughs four. So what wow. laughter does physiologically to you is huge, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's incredible for your immune system. And if we're laughing four times a day when there isn't a pandemic going on, that's a problem. I don't feel like uh, I'm going to see too many smiling faces these days. And I've already had some people looking at me like, I don't care. I don't have empathy because I'm smiling. I'm happy. Uh, it's the exact opposite. I have my oxygen mask on. I'm mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually aligned right now. So I can help and I can serve others right now rather than feel like the sky is falling. And it's not an oblivion to what's going on. But as leaders, it's really our responsibility right now to get our acts in order so we can truly help and serve. That's why we got into any type of coaching in the first place. Right. I completely agree with that. And I have so many, so many questions to stem off of this. Um, yeah. And, and I mean, I want, I, want, I want to dig into tapping and just so everybody knows too, I want to dig into what types of exercise and things we can be doing to protect ourselves uh, especially if you are having to are confined all of a sudden to your home. Uh, we, we, we're going to have to dig into nutrition and stuff like that. And you have such a, a wealth of information and expertise around all of this, but let's go back for a moment and talk about tapping. And just for everybody listening in that might not be familiar with what is tapping. And, and you mentioned, um, you know, can you, let's just have you explain what is tapping and in the, in the manner in which you were referring to there. So the best way I can describe tapping, which is called emotional freedom techniques, it's basically as if ancient Chinese acupressure, so acupuncture without the needles, had sex with cognitive behavioral therapy. That's the best description I've ever heard of it. You're really combining these two pieces together to really learn how to use the letting go technique where you can feel an emotion and let it go process and move that energy through your body uh, for me i found this back in 2006 when i was setting up my clinical nutrition fitness holistic practice and uh, then went on and and got educated in it professionally uh, after that and uh, i really found it was a way that the universe in my personal opinion had a great sense of humor coming from a competitive bodybuilding space Everything in fitness and nutrition is slow, methodical transformation, and you're like, Rome isn't built in a day, and you have to really build and create and custom and tweak and slowly build, and, and it's hard work, and you're pushing, and, and, and there's a lot to that space. So the universe kind of flipped it on its head for me and said, or we can have immediate results in this stress-relieving technique by doing something funny and silly looking where you're literally just tapping on different acupuncture meridians on your, on your face and saying some things that make you sound like uh, Stuart Smalley from Saturday Night Live. So <laughs> it's, it's a pretty funny concept to think, wow, I can really change my emotional state, let alone break through things that I've been holding on to. Some of them since I was a kid within 20 minutes to an hour. And in some cases, five minute sessions, it's, it's pretty mind blowing how quick, easy, and simple, yet complex it can be in, uh, when done in precision. And, and I want to I uh, jump on that for a second as well, because I, I think people listening in that maybe haven't heard of it are starting to understand, in a nutshell, right, tapping is touching physical points, pressure points, acupuncturist points on your body that helps to release stress, anxiety, emotions, and, and so forth. Um, for somebody who has zero experience in, in tapping whatsoever, 
how would you get started practicing? Is that something you can get started practicing on your own or do you need to, to learn a technique to do this correctly? So, so great, great point. Um, I relate any modality, fitness, nutrition, mental toughness, tapping any one of these modalities uh, in the same way. So in fitness, you can build a gigantic following on social media by putting up band exercises showing your, your great glutes. <laughs> but it doesn't mean that you're a certified strength conditioning specialist understanding biomechanics. The same thing goes for nutrition. You could lose some weight and all of a sudden you're a nutrition expert. And the same thing goes for emotional freedom techniques tapping. I do clinical EFT, which uh, has a base where you're actually hitting the meridian points. And the reason I say this is yes, you can find anything on the internet, but it doesn't mean you don't have to shift through a whole bunch of crap. <laughs> right. And so right. many of those videos you're going to see, people are tapping on spots that aren't even the acupuncture points. So it's, uh, they'll, be, they'll be tapping here and hitting here and I'm looking and it's, it's, it's almost like imagine if you're lifting weights and people are curling and going and moving and doing stuff here. You're like, like what, what are you even doing? So making sure in any one of these things, in fitness, in nutrition, in mental game coaching, in any one of these uh, techniques, making sure that you are following a protocol and start with a professional and expand from there. You know, there's a, there's a statement that says when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And the follow-up to that is that when the student is really ready, then the teacher disappears. I'll so that. getting that foundation set in any one of these modalities is, is to me foundational. You wouldn't start a business just by, just by following YouTube. Uh, yeah, you shouldn't follow any type of transformation without getting at least a foundation going. Excellent. So yeah, so for those who are, who are interested in tapping, consult a professional. Um, there's no guarantees to, uh, to experience any stress relief or calm or, or any, anything else, any other benefits from it if you don't know the right spots in your body for which to tap and release um, you know, such energies and so forth. And so that's super helpful for all of us to understand. And so again, as we, let's, let's move into you know, diet for a second here because a lot of people are, are very curious about what should I be eating, um, especially at a, at a time like now where there's this very contagious virus running around, moving around quickly, spreading very quickly. Uh, you, nobody knows how long this will be. Nobody knows will, if this will return. This is something that obviously, even uh, if you're listening to this later on, is something that could consistently return as a diff in a different format. And so what are some things that coaches and entrepreneurs can do, and even just people in general can do, to protect their immune systems, um, live healthier, and, and just general, generally speaking, um, kind of manage stress levels through something like, you know, kind of like a healthy diet. What, what foods should we be eating and avoiding um, at a time like this right now? So foundationally, um, this, is, this is a very interesting timing. And I will tell you, no matter how perfectly you eat and exercise, if you don't manage your stress, you can still get deathly sick. And I am a poster child for that. I, uh, as, you, as you know, Dino, about a year ago, I ended up getting severe pneumonia. I was in critical condition, laying in the hospital beds, um, right on walking on death's door, basically. And people were looking at this just going like, how is this guy who eats perfectly, trains perfectly? And it was because in many cases, I wasn't really taking care of stress management tools. So first off, what you eat with your mind and how you manage your emotions, if they aren't in play and you're having panic attacks and anxiety and all that stuff, you've got to get all of this stuff in order. And then when it comes down to the nutrients that you eat and the food that you eat, um, as well as your movement and your exercise, it's so imperative that you find the right system that works for you based on a combination of like your biochemical individuality, what's working for you, your lifestyle and social individuality, and, uh, and just making the conditions work for you. So it's not about the exact foods that are perfect for each individual on a, on a meta level. It's that if they don't spoil quickly, don't eat them. Focus on real clean foods. And if you're eating animal proteins, you know, your lean meats, your vegetables, your fruits, your nuts and seeds, your your healthy oils, foods, and then if you're going a vegetarian or vegan route, 
foods that are bright and colorful and full of energy and aren't the packaged processed convenient foods. Now, let's throw in some real world here for a minute and say, okay, let's say we all get on lockdown for a few weeks and you run out of the, out of the real deal stuff uh, that's in the grocery store because your, your veggies and your, and your fruits aren't going to be lasting two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Look at what can you get in a powdered form? What can you get in a frozen form? Or what can you get in a packaged form that is still real food where they found natural preservatives for them? Uh, it's part of the reason why we developed the Fit365 shakes in the first place was mm -hmm. we, we don't live in a bubble. We need quick, easy, convenient in times where things seem like easy street, let alone in times where we have to set up the shop and so many people are now trying to run a business from home. They're still dealing with their kids being at home while they're still trying to run their business. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're 20 and you're solo, you know, yes, you can hop and live the, live the laptop lifestyle without any one of those variables involved. But once you get married and then you have kids, if you have any of those variables going on, I've got two homeschooled kids, a dog, a new puppy as of yesterday, which I don't even know if I've told you yet, Dina. And, uh, and uh, quite a few of these variables. So you have to make the conditions work for you on the food level as well. And I, and I want to ask real quickly too, because you mentioned um, natural preservatives. So are you just talking about frozen goods here? You're talking about protein powders. Um, is that what you mean by natural preservatives or am I not understanding something? Completely? Yeah, so, so foods that use preservatives like salt, um, like in our protein powder, we use, uh, in our meal replacement shake, we use a Himalayan uh, pink salt. So a sea salt is a great natural preservative. Um, silica, which is a mineral, is a great natural preservative. So different things that have uh, that preservative route, right? A, a cured meat, like um, if you're looking at like an organic uh, beef jerky, for example, one that's not using a bunch of garbage, but really is just using a good amount of sea salt, then it's, it's a much better option compared to like, oh, we're just going to go eat um, macaroni and cheese. <laughs> and right. they, that's, that's, my, that's my lunch or everything's just going to be canned soup. So and, and and what about like, uh, uh, what about supplements too? Because that's been a, a conversation that's really big right now is like, what supplements should we be stocking up on or should we have already stocked up on or that would be most beneficial to protecting our immune systems? Um, do you have any recommendations on things that we should, in that, those regards that kind of are natural, you know, natural preservatives, so to speak, um, to have a life shelf? Definitely. So start with the foundation that you would want anyway. So on a foundational level, you're going to want to make sure you're getting in things like your vitamin A, getting in some vitamin D. So making sure you're getting in good quality um, fat soluble vitamins, as well as the water soluble vitamins getting in your B's and C's. Vitamin C has the most research of any vitamin in a high dose for immune system benefit. It's quite amazing. And you can be taking you know, pretty solid doses with that. Uh, I won't quantitatively get into numbers just to be on the, we'll call it the safe legal side. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, but we, we, it is something that you all can definitely reach out and get access to. The next thing is notice that the majority of your immune system, about 80% of your immune system is actually located in your digestive tract. So not only the quality of foods you're eating, but good quality probiotics for gut health in high quantity marks. Look at the companies that are sprinkling in probiotics into their products and saying things like half a billion or 1 billion probiotics that's really not enough to move a needle. You're really gonna want to be taking a much higher dose probiotic for your gut health um, as a foundation. Now, on top of that, and your omega-3 fatty acids, which most of us are way off on, and taking green supplements, there are so many custom supplements that you can level up to that you can get into custom protocols that can be $1,000 a month. So it's really like start with your foundation First and foremost, get your food in check. And then secondarily, supplement with these core foundational supplements that I just previously mentioned. And you can take things like um, activated charcoal, which is very inexpensive, as a great thing to kind of clear out toxins out of your system as needed. 
but that's not going to be really fighting a true virus. What they've seen the best results with that I've been hearing is just simply vitamin C in high doses, infusions, ozone therapy, all of that type of stuff, but it gets much more complex. The greatest supplement you can take right now is to stay away from other human beings. It's a really cool thing. It's called the couch uh, supplement. It's really good. <laughs> it's a really good workout. You can do a chair workout where you sit your butt on your couch, and then you stand up and then you sit your butt back down on your couch and then you're done. <laughs> so that's another great supplement you could take. And, and actually it's a, it's a perfect transition and leeway there because as, as everybody is, is beginning to, uh, you know, basically work out from home and, and needs exercise and needs uh, movement um, beyond just, you know, what we're otherwise doing uh, in our normal uh, day-to-day life on the, on the laptop and so forth, or commute sitting and commuting in traffic and whatnot. Um, what are some exercises that we can do at home um, to kind of, to, to, yeah, to essentially maximize our energy levels, maximize our vitality, maximize, um, you know, minimize stress levels. Like what, what at home activities and exercises would, would you recommend? Because uh, again, I, I think you're going to, you have, you're going to know exactly what to do. I always, I always go and ask you as the uh, um, previously celebrity fitness trainer of all these amazing athletes and, and, and who, who, you know, who have you, but um, what do you, what would you recommend to that's, that's easy to do and that people would know how to do it. Um, that would make a difference. Do you think? So, so efficiency is definitely paramount, especially I, the type of people I coach are, you know, conscious visionaries, busy leaders all over the country. I do a lot of my sessions via zoom where I'm there with people, other people I'm custom designing programs for them, but you definitely want to focus on efficiency, get in, get out, get it done. The fact that a lot of these gyms are about to close right now and they're saving quite a bit of time and driving to a gym, driving back is fantastic. I do find there's still a decent part of the, the um, entrepreneurial community that feels like a seven minute workout that they pulled out of uh, a magazine, which is barely moving on a chair is enough. And uh, I would tell them that my eight year old daughter would laugh at those workouts and say, grabbing these little two pound weights is kind of a joke and she'd grab 12s in each hand and laugh at you. Um, Don't underestimate your strength or your power or thinking that lifting some weight is going to make you too strong or going to make you look too bulky. It's not going to happen uh, if you're under the right toolage. What I would focus on is efficiency. Go download one of the timers where you can put yourself on either a 30-30 split, which is 30 seconds work, 30 seconds rest, or even a higher uh, intensity of like a 40-second work and a 20-second rest split. And you can really focus on that world-class efficiency, take all other distractions out and get a good total body workout done in, you know, anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, pending your, your capabilities. So it's done. It's first thing in the morning, you're in, you're out, you're up, you're done. You're on with your day. You're feeling good. Your head's in a good space. I think that's a paramount way to approach it, especially now when we're under so much stress and there's so much what we'll call unknown factor. To think like, well, I'm going to go through this day with all this newfound chaos and lack of understanding where things are going and think you're going to be able to somehow sneak something in at night. I don't think that's really going to be the best protocol. I think you can right now is one of the best times to focus on the win your day first idea. I like that. Yeah. Start starting with uh, what needs to happen. Getting it done helps dramatically to manage stress levels and to push, um, push things forward because it's for sure getting done um, because it's the first thing you do each and every day. I absolutely love that concept and, and live by that one um, uh, in, in business. Um, but it, so, okay. So I heard interval training, cause again, it doesn't, you don't need to be working out for an hour. Um, but I heard, right. You know, 15 to 30 minutes can get it done. And, you know, just so to, make- with, um, to give you a couple of specific examples, if you could start with some body weight movements, some lunges, some squats, some dynamic moves that are like push-ups into rotations or push-ups into tucks, things where you have to take a um, interval training, body weight-like foundation. Make sure that your mechanics are good first and foremost, and then you add in the resistance. Resistance can be dumbbells. It can be kettlebells. One of my favorite tools for at home is a TRX or any kind of suspension pulley system because it's versatile. You can throw it over your door and go right away. 
It doesn't take long to set up and you can do multiple things with it. I love the idea of getting a lot done with little setup where you can go move to move to move to move, in, out, done. A TRX, you can pull a strap around and get 25 moves between that and body weight done for under a hundred bucks worth of equipment and in a five foot or, you know, six foot by six foot space. So it fits the requirements of like, I need to adapt to the fact that my gym is closed and I need some stuff at home. So foundationally starting with something like a TRX, I think would work great. I think that's an amazing recommendation there. I'm going to run out and and, uh, I should say hop online, probably grab myself a a TRX as well. And, And get the TRX go is my recommendation. You throw it over the door versus the one that you have to drill into the wall. I'll tell you all a really quick funny story as I have my uh, client, my first client in the morning that I coach, uh, which is 6.30 Eastern, which is 3.30 Pacific where I'm at. And I've been coaching this guy for a while and he went out and got a TRX and, and waited. It was like six months and he's like, ah, I don't have time. You know, I'm a busy entrepreneur. I don't have time to drill this thing into the wall. And I didn't know the go existed. So his son came over for Thanksgiving and he has kids there and he said, hey, can you go set that up? He went in the bathroom, came back, and he said, hey, I thought you were going to set it up. He's like, I did. All you do with the TRX Go is you pull it out of the box, you take the thing, you throw it over the door, you shut the door, it's done. <laughs> it took, it. Because I didn't even know about that. It took us six months of him not being able to utilize that in his home gym until we realized how fast it is. So make sure you get the TRX Go version. TRX Go version. We'll leave a link uh, beneath this episode for everybody to go check that out. Um, so, all right, so I heard, yeah, body weight. Using the TRX, um, again, don't fall under the assumption that because you're doing body weight exercises, whether those be um, push-ups or using the TRX and, and things of that nature, that you're going to all of a sudden be big and bulky. I think uh, that's a common misperception. If it was that easy to gain muscle and look like the rock, I think everybody would be stomping around um, you know, in, at, at his mass level and size. Right. Um, so, so what are some other things that coaches and entrepreneurs can do? I mean, we, we've covered – basically how to eat. We've covered exercises you can do. We've covered that stress is probably the number one thing that we need to do as coaches and entrepreneurs, as business owners, uh, especially during the, these trying times. What are uh, a couple other things that you would recommend um, we do, if it, whether it's meditation or a certain practice that, again, will um, allow us as business owners to continually be pressing forward when, uh, when it seems like so much is otherwise, you know, going wrong. Right. So I set up for myself, for my clients, what's called a, we put together a 4M system, which is based on the ideology of motive, mindset, mastery, and momentum. So motive and your motivation, most people focus right now on what is my big why, what is the main reason why I do this? And for a lot of people is, you know, because I want to, you know, leave a legacy or I want to make my family proud, but we don't think about the little whys. So each and every action sitting back and say, what is the point of doing this? Because all too often we get this giant to-do list of things going on and the motive is super small. Now, if I had you, for example, let's just approach this with regards to your workout. And if you're like, I'm working out to lose fat. And you're like, well, I'm too busy at work today, so screw it. I'm not going to work out to lose fat. I'll find another way. But if instead you said, you know what, I'm going to go exercise and I'm dedicating this workout to somebody, right? And you send a little text over to one of your friends and you're like, hey, Mike, I just wanted to let you know, I'm about to go get my workout in. I was thinking about you. I'm going to crush this one. Just letting you know I'm thinking and I'm dedicating this to you. Wow. Okay. You think you're going to work out a little bit harder during that workout and actually get a little bit more fulfillment out of it? Absolutely. And you're also now connecting with people on a higher level, which is a great thing to do when you're not in person with so many people right now. So setting that motive is good. Mindset is just like we were talking about from the beginning. I got a giant smile on my face right now, which is not fake. I know that there's chaos going around. I already have enough chaos having, you know, two kids, two dogs, wife, all that stuff. But like the way you approach one thing is how you approach everything. And I'm looking at my measure of success as I woke up, my fingers, my hands, everything's here. I'm feeling pretty good. We'll, we'll handle it as it comes. So your mindset behind all of your actions. Mastery is figuring out what those pieces are that you can master within this process. And don't feel like you need to master it all. Feel like it's okay to outsource. <laughs> outsource is something very beneficial for a reason. And then ensuring that you're having that momentum 
when you're like, ah, I'm just going to skip today or I'm going to take this off or I'll just wait because you don't have accountability, momentum gets smashed. And it's unreal how just a few days of a lack of momentum makes this stuff impossible. And I talk about two different fuel sources, one being willpower, one being enthusiasm. When willpower is your main fuel source, stuff is impossible and you burn out and it doesn't last. When it's enthusiasm, it's like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Everything is easy going, fun, dancing, simple. You don't even have to think about it. I like that Mickey Mouse kid house. <laughs> it's unreal. I actually learned that by watching my kids when they're really young, they're watching that show. They're laying their flopped board on the, on the couch. And when Mickey Mouse Clubhouse came on, they jumped up and they started dancing around. And I was like, that's real energy. That's sustainable energy. It's enthusiasm right there. And it's so focused. Like how can they go from like, Blah, flopped like I can't even move to like a dancing machine in a millisecond and it's all about how you're fueled so the no pain no game push hustle mindset that is pushed by so many of the macho uh, masculine coaches of coaches out there um, to me is completely unsustainable and mm -hmm. uh, and archaic if you don't embrace the balance of the masculine and the feminine uh, to me that is called not being a real man so you're just not as evolved. <laughs> it's uh, the, the old ca caveman take the club, bang it over the head and drag it home approach isn't going to work in this evolved society. So you need the balance of all of it. So it's much better to be fueled up with enthusiasm if you want your results to last, regardless of the chaos going around you. And, and I love that tip that you shared there about um, dedicating a workout or something that you know has to get done, you know, in your coaching business, in your business. Um, and going, hey, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna tackle these items for this person or for this reason gives you that little extra motivation and excitement um, and ability to go harder. And so I thought that was an amazing share. And and um, one of the things I also wanted to ask you too, Kyle, is is again because this is the Secrets of Coaching podcast. And and one of the things I know you're you're big on, and I think you have a really interesting insight um, too is is the importance of communication as a coach, communicating with your clients, right? And here we are at this point in time where it's no secret, everybody knows what's on everybody else's mind and what, what's talking and where everybody's headspace is, right? It's, it's around this virus and things that are happening in our economy right now. What are your thoughts when it comes to communication with our clients? Is this, is this a situation where we just pretend like everything's normal and, and, and like, in regards to communication with our clients or as coaches and as leaders, is it our job to step forward and to immediately bring up and call out the elephant in the room and say, Hey guys, I know this is what's happening. This is what your concerns are. Here's how we're going to overcome this. What, what's your take on communication as a coach with your clients uh, during a time like, like this one? Uh, I'll give you a great example on this one. Imagine you're sitting there, and you're out at a nice steakhouse date with your girl. And she's got lipstick on her teeth and a little mascara smudged over here. Or she's got a big old chunk of spinach caught in her teeth. And that's the elephant in the room. And you're just like, I don't want to upset her. So I'm just going to pretend that it's not there. And then she walks into the bathroom and she sees what she looks like in the mirror. How do you think she's going to act when she walks back to that table? Yeah, yeah, she's going to be pissed. <laughs> right? She's going to be like, why did you not tell me? Yeah. <laughs> That's the first thing she's going to say. So to pretend that we live in some form of a bubble, whether or not it's fitness, nutrition, coaching, your business, any type of interpersonal relationship that is outside of the human condition and what we're all experiencing right now is doing a disservice, right? In high level sports, when let's say we're looking at Alabama football. The first thing they're doing is they're studying the heck out of their opponent and they're making all of their plays and their conditions work based on the conditions of, okay, this is an away game versus a home game. Here's who we're playing. Here's how they play in advance. And they make the conditions work for that moment. And all the mindset and strategy and everything is based on the conditions. When you're just cookie cuttering some formula that you ripped off with some other coach, that's not coaching. That's not coaching. Coaching is making the conditions work for the person you're working with, which is absolutely about communication. Now, there's two sides to communication. One side is what I'm saying to you right now. 
The other side is the foundation, which is what's going on right here, which is actually listening and hearing what obstacles are, are faced that the people you're working with and you're coaching are facing and understand that you may not have walked in their shoes. So if you're, for example, let's say you're a newer coach, I'm 20 something years into coaching. So the 22 year old coach for me, I didn't understand what anything less than hundred percent was. And I would give advice on all these things I had no experience with like parenting, <laughs> man, here's what you need to feed your kids. If you live in a biosphere with Pauly Shore, but <laughs> right. the, the reality is you need to listen, understand the dynamics that that person is bringing to you, let them feel heard and then customize it for them. That is ideal coaching. It's not just excuses, excuses, excuses. Some of these obstacles are real actual obstacles that they're facing in their life. You can't just say, well, I did this because you are not walking in their shoes. So communication is paramount for world-class coaching. And just remember the person on the other end that you are coaching. If instead of just think about like, what is their order number or maybe what is their name? If you looked at them the same way you would look at your own grandmother and realize that we're all interconnected, the whole customer experience and customer intimacy would completely change. My customers tend to stay with me for well over a decade. That's a fairly normal retention rate for me for a reason. <laughs> right. And the reason is I truly deeply care about them as human beings. And I make sure that that energy exchange is, is awesome and positive. And, and it doesn't matter how big you scale, you have to still look at them as real people, not as followers, right? They're not sheep. Don't go on social media and say, what is wrong with you people? Like, like who's on the other end that's reading that? <laughs> Are these your friends, right? That's what they're called according to Facebook, for example. They're right. called friends. Don't call people your followers. Call your customers humans, fellow human, fellow man, the people who are coming to you for insight and advice and, and ideas. And just remember that the customer service communication piece is the most important piece. And that, and that one's huge because I think that one is, is – so overlooked today where such a common conversational topic is amongst entrepreneurs is that that one word that one s letter word scale right how do we scale how do we get more and more and more and more and more and a lot of times what is so easy to have happen um, in the coaching space right is the quality of service and the touch points and the communication tends to all of a sudden start to suck or become not becomes non-existent and while and it's, it's such a funny cash 22, because what you're really trying to do is scale. And if you start cutting off communication and the results you're providing to your current clients, you're actually going to end up doing the opposite of growing your business and scaling because you will begin to lose those clients. Uh, they will absolutely notice the difference in uh, attention, uh, the, the, you know, the difference in their business actually growing from what you're able to provide them and coach them on and so forth. And so um, I love the way that you explain all that. Cause that is, um, uh, so crucial uh, to a successful coaching business. And I think it's important our audience hears that from somebody who's been in the space as long as you have um, as well, Kyle. So that's, yeah, that's uh, ultimately crucial. So uh, what is, let's do this, Kyle, because as we are, are starting to kind of wind down here, what is one piece of advice you would give to others today? And it can be, um, it can be just about anything or it can be specifically to coaches but what's one piece of advice you'd like to give to, to, to others that you think has changed, you know, that has otherwise changed your life um, in some way, shape or form? Oh, easy. <laughs> I give you a lot, but I, I would say start with this one. Um, never stop learning, but don't hide behind learning. And what I mean by that is you're constantly moving, evolving, changing, right? I started with new, with fitness and nutrition and mental game coaching and have evolved it into energy work and pieces of, of spirituality involved, looking at the holistic full approach within fitness and nutrition. So whatever it is that you are coaching, if you feel like you got it all figured out in your master formula that you created um, you know, and, and have in, in a sales funnel or whatever is, is all that you need to know, uh, you're going to get passed up quick because you're going to lose your passion. You're going to be serving 
three flavors of ice cream. And if you're just feeling like you're serving ice cream and you're not passionate about what you're doing, the greatest way to stay passionate, like how have I stayed in this for 20 something years is because I'm constantly evolving what I'm doing and finding ways to make sure I can serve whoever it is that I'm identifying with and aligning with and I'm finding the right avatar. And for me right now, that's conscious visionaries. It's not celebrities the way it was before. It's completely modifying. It's right. Is that what is aligned with where I'm at? And then the second part of that, which was the don't hide behind the learning. It's a really easy thing to do when you're coaching is to get a little bit of scared of change. And you think like, Oh, I'm struggling with this facet of my business. I'm just going to get another certification and that will solve it. And the reality is if you don't feel like a solopreneur and you realize that you have people out there who are willing to help. And it's not about just finding random strangers who are just trying to, you know, give you a sales pitch and sell you on why you need to hire their services, but find ways you can collaborate. Um, it, it's going to get you past the things that you just, you can't be the expert in everything. So don't try to be, and don't hide behind some certification, like a new certification rather than actually taking action. I love that. And I love that in so many ways. Um, my first agency was called dynamic internet marketing because dynamic always evolving, always changing. And that is, it's just so amazing to hear from you and such incredible advice. And that's how, like you said, that's exactly what Kyle just said, guys, that's how you avoid burnout is you keep growing and you allow your business to grow and change. And that might be your audience, your message, your marketing. It could be your branding. It could be anything, but continually change and evolve. Um, and you'll find yourself doing something that you love every single day. Cause it's going to be new and exciting because you're changing with, with, uh, with your business as it grows. And so, uh, amazing, amazing advice. And, and so Kyle, I just want to, um, thank you so much for your time, energy and, and wisdom. It's been an absolute blast to sit down with you as always my friend and catch up. Um, I think this, this particular show and episode, uh, is going to be super impactful and helpful to everybody again, especially with everything going on right now with the virus. And, uh, and so Kyle, where is, the best place for people to learn more about you or otherwise get in contact with you? Yes. The right now we're in the middle of a new rebrand because I am constantly changing and evolving everything I'm doing. And what I would focus on right now is reach out under social media under fit Kyle Brown. You'll find me there. Just look for fit Kyle Brown. If you can't find me, go find me through all of Dino's stuff because uh, we've known each other a very, very long time, which is a great thing. But uh, I'm here to definitely help, to serve, to guide you along any of these routes. And uh, I appreciate uh, any type of connections. We're all in this together, guys. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it, my friend. Uh, thanks so much again for joining us. Guys, we'll have all the show notes, the links to Kyle's websites and social media. Super awesome, dude. Definitely reach out to him with any questions you, you have. And otherwise, Kyle, thanks again for joining us, guys. This has been the Secrets of Coaching Podcast. We will see you all in the next episode. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in to another episode of the Secrets of Coaching podcast. My name is Dino Gomez. I'm your host. Don't forget, beneath this video in the description, you're going to find a ton of resources to help you start, grow, and scale your online coaching business. So be sure to check those out. Also, guys, find us on iTunes if you want to listen to this show while you're on the go. Otherwise, we will catch you guys in the very next episode.